<clears throat> oh, hi. <laughs> now, I bet you're wondering why I'm wearing this blindfold. That's so that I can shamelessly put Bird Box in the dance. Well, now that we've got that, though. Oh, hi. Didn't see you there. Today, we're going to be talking a bit about the eyesight of some prehistoric animals. Now, I think a good one to start off with would be, well, Tyrannosaurus Rex. Up here. If we can pan the camera up to see his face. Now, this guy, while uh, in the movies, you know, it's always, uh, can, come on, let's move the camera back down. There we go. Now, in the movies, you know, Jurassic Park, it's, oh, don't move, and you can't see him. This was based on an early uh, idea about Tyrannosaur eyesight, where someone looked at its brain case and said, well, that's kind of like a frog. Uh, frogs can't see things if they ain't moving. That was kind of a dumb assumption. Uh, we could pretty well bet Tyrannosaurus Rex could see things when, it's, when they weren't moving, because a lot of animals' first response to something scary happening, you know, deer in headlights, is to freeze up. So, uh, another thing uh, was a lot of dinosaurs, especially a lot of meat-eating dinosaurs, would have had vision similar to that of a, like a swan or a goose, where they, their eyes are each pointed in a different direction, so they can't actually see straight in front of them, needing to constantly turn their heads so that they, they can keep a, a full range of motion and they can't quite get depth perception the same way we can. Tyrannosaurus Rex actually has a similar field of view as human beings and uh, he, he has a, a similar blind spot to we as well. A bit bigger than ours because he's got a much larger snout than we do. So, uh, an animal that uh, lived with Tyrannosaurus Rex, and we're going to keep this a bit brief today, uh, is Triceratops. Now, this guy, uh, the, the eye would be sitting right here, uh, isn't going to have as good a vision as tr uh, Tyrannosaurus Rex, if only because when your lifestyle is, uh, uh, or at least your, your selection in uh, mating and group behaviors is based around stabbing each other in the face with horns, you probably don't want to have big, stinking, mushy eyeballs on the front of your head. So they've got uh, uh, comparatively smaller eyeballs, well, because you know, that these things are being jammed into each other's faces all the time. And probably a lot like, uh, similar to a lot of modern herbivores, they might not have needed to rely on eyesight as much, but probably relying on other senses as well. Uh, a herbivore that was probably putting much more stock in eyesight would be uh, Nanosaurus, though. Um, I, I put a lot of uh, uh, feeling into Nanosaurus because this guy's darn name has changed a million times over the last two years. We'll talk more about this in a later video, but you can see he's got quite big eyes for the size of his head. Well, we're going to keep this episode brief today. Do you have a joke to send us out on, cameraman? A horse walks into a bar. Multiple people inside of the bar walk out due to the possible danger of this situation. Oh, come on, man. I recorded you saying that one so that I could edit it into a future video that you Yeah, I know. I... And now, I can't make videos without you. I got... You'll have to I deal with me, Ron. I thought you were going to say something like Bird Box's popularity. Because that's a joke. Bird yeah. Box is terrible. It is. And it's an okay movie. Anyway. No. Thanks for coming by. Leave a subscribe, drop a like, and like a bell. Like a bell. Like, like the bell button. Uh, we'll see you next time on Moist Gary. Maybe we'll talk about Christmas that episode. I don't really know. Please stop filming. Please. Please stop. Ryan, you're supposed to give me a cue. No, I'm not.